Hey guys, how are you doing? I hope you're watching this video in good health. In this video, I will be discussing a very important question. Probably the most important question for all the Canadian aspirants or the new immigrants who are waiting to come to Canada. Should you come to Canada in the year 2020 or not? I know I'm talking about a long time period of uh, eight months or so, but at this time it is very important to discuss this question. I have been actually avoiding this question. To be very frank with you, many people have asked me this question, but I actually avoided answering this question or making a video about it because of two reasons. The first reason being that I knew that uh, there would be a lot of negativity in this video, so I wanted to avoid this video. And secondly, I was actually waiting for some of the official confirmations from the government of Canada. Now we have got the predictions for COVID-19 and also the employment status in the month of March. So in this video, we would be discussing all of that and obviously based on those statistics, I would be suggesting you should you come to Canada in the year 2020 or when should you come to Canada if you should come to Canada in this year. So don't go anywhere, I'll be right back. Okay, I know you're obviously aware of what is happening around the world. All of us have got smartphones. We keep checking uh, how many casualties are there in Canada, in US, in India, and how many uh, people are actually affected. All that statistics is fine. But I'm talking about two very important statistics, the prediction for COVID-19 and about the job losses in the month of March. So recently, the government of Canada and the provincial governments like the Ontario government, British Columbia, Quebec government actually announced their predictions that uh, how they actually feel that COVID-19 is, going, is going to spread in the upcoming months and how soon they can curb this problem. So let's see their predictions first of all and then we'll discuss about the job losses. Okay, talking of projections or predictions, British Columbia have refused to do any projections but the province of Quebec has done that prediction or the projection they've said that around 1200 to 9000 people can die by the end of this month only and for them this was a short term projection for Ontario they've did a long term projection they say that around 3000 to 15000 people could die another shocking point to note here is that they've said that the effects of COVID-19 may last from 18 months to 2 years yes this is as shocking as it can be okay apart from that the federal government has also released their projections they've said that this will be the new normal until a vaccine is developed vaccine is developed and vaccine is distributed it will take a long time talking of the projections for COVID-19 they have said that it may go up to the spring of 2021 one year from now and these are the projections from the government of Canada you can see they've given a graph here which says that it could go up to spring of 2021 also in Toronto it has been suggested to extend the social distancing or the lockdown period for the next three months this was released in the start of April which means that April May June Toronto may be locked down okay I know the numbers were very disappointing and heartbreaking for all of us and the time that they have actually speculated was also very disturbing one year it is just spring of 2020 we haven't even entered into the summer of 2020 and they're talking about the spring of 2021 one year time i don't know how we will actually be able to uh, stay in our homes for one year anyways whatever happens uh, it, it seems that it is the new normal we all have to adapt with it we can talk about all of this in some other video for now we can just talk about the unemployment status in Canada the recent statistics have just come for the month of March let's have a look at it according to the labor force survey done by statistics Canada Canada has now lost more than 1 million jobs in the month of March that is a uh, devastating news more than 1 million in less than a month something very interesting is written here that apart from those 1 million 2.1 million either worked less than half their usual hours or didn't work at all and it is being said that these 2.1 million Canadians 
who saw their work hours dramatically reduced could be seen at the risk of losing their job in the months to come guys 3.1 million people who have either already lost their job or would be losing their job in the upcoming months okay now when we have all of these predictions and the statistics with us i'll talk to three different types of people the first one who actually are waiting to get their ita maybe they're preparing for ielts maybe actually they're um, you know they are preparing to get some documents whatever if you're waiting to get your ita you're just waiting in the pool maybe you're trying to improve your ielts score in that case you should keep doing it there's no reason reason to worry uh, just stay calm keep doing what you're doing but yes the second number or the second type of people who are actually uh, who've got their ita recently maybe they've also submitted their application they were dreaming of coming to canada this year maybe in, they were hoping to get their ita in the next couple of months and then they were hoping that they would come to canada in uh, the in the summer hold on you know do not do this mistake of uh, you know taking decisions so rapidly maybe do not resign from your work uh, just keep working where you are actually working once you get your ppr i think you should then decide according to the scenario at that point of time that how much time have you actually got with you what is the situation then and then you should take this decision okay now the third category of people who got their pr or the ppr rather a couple of months back uh, maybe they were just waiting for the month of march april or may to come to canada in the good weather so they can actually get a job they can settle down obviously this is the best time to come to canada right uh, all of those people or maybe who you have just got uh, your pr you're overjoyed with this but you should wait all of those people you should definitely wait maybe with some uh, travel restrictions when the travel restrictions are actually lifted you would think that you should come to canada maybe spend some time thinking about it that should you actually come in this stringent and this difficult times or not these times are going to be even more worse than 2008 economic crisis we all know about that time i was in college that point of time but uh, my seniors my cousins my brother sister everybody told used to tell me about this how they actually suffering in their jobs how they were actually struggling to keep their jobs in their hand it was the worst snow economic slowdown that you know our generation actually saw but this year 2020 is going to be even worse it is not going to be easy for any country be it india be it usa be it canada or many uh, maybe any middle eastern country it would be very difficult you just saw the amount of jobs lost or the number of jobs lost in the last month only 3.1 million people would be losing their jobs in the maybe in the upcoming months this is a huge number so when you come to canada what will you do obviously you come for a brighter future right you come for a better life but what will you do if you can't get a job obviously your struggle would increase multiple folds when you come here and you apply for the jobs maybe you don't get the uh, invitations i'm not discouraging anyone but i'm trying to tell you the uh, you know expectation uh, versus reality kind of a situation so how it would actually happen you would come here expecting that you would get a job in one month two months time and then obviously you would start your uh, your new life in canada but the situation might be a lot different and there are high probabilities of that difficult situation coming up now i can definitely say that there would be millions of people who would have canadian experience you would be competing with thousands of people in your own job category for maybe a few hundred jobs for one uh, for one job there might be 10 people lining up the competition would be even tougher with all those people who have got canadian experience i'm sure you must have heard about that phrase canadian experience it's not a myth it is a factor here in canada yes you can get jobs you can get some odd jobs maybe some survival jobs but nobody comes to your uh, comes to this dreamland to do the survival jobs we all come here to spend a great life uh, you know you know we imagine a lot of things that we'll go there we'll buy fancy cars um, get a home you know settle our, ourselves over there but that might not be possible this year at least this year you know this year is going to be very difficult for almost everyone people would actually struggle to just survive in their jobs if you have a job you're lucky and i and i feel that uh, you know that would be the case all over the world 
all of those people who actually have their job would be really lucky to have it because many people out there have already lost it okay so that was about all the problems that you might face in finding a job now let's talk about all of those people who would be thinking of uh, doing a soft landing here in the month of maybe may in the month of june and then going back to their home countries or uh, maybe coming back after a year so all of those people should be prepared for really tough times i recently saw a news that airbnbs would also be restricted in toronto you have to self isolate yourself for 14 days i am sure these restrictions of self isolation for international travelers won't be lifted until june it's not going to be lifted for sure so how are you actually supposed to land here as a new immigrant maybe you go to a hotel and then you self isolate yourself there's no one actually to get you groceries you can't go to the grocery stores how will you actually survive for the first two weeks if you have got a kid it would be very difficult you can't go outside you can't even after the two weeks you can't actually um, you know get to see the beautiful canada you can't get to see the downtown toronto because there's no one there actually you can't get to see the lake shore you can't get to see the cn tower maybe you know you can see from from the outside but not you can't uh, go to the top of cn tower you can't go to the niagara falls you know it would be a very different world in the upcoming months as well if you have a friend or a family member here then it would be very easy for you you can simply you know go over to their place after self isolating yourself and uh, then maybe live over there you can maybe ask them to uh, deliver you groceries maintaining your social distancing and maybe after that you can go back to your home country but for all of those people who haven't got uh, you know close friends or family members here it would be very difficult so yes all of those people who were actually thinking of coming to canada in the next couple of months i would say you should actually postpone your travel even further maybe in the month of uh, july august and all of those people who are thinking of coming to canada in the summers or maybe in the fall i would say hold on don't resign your jobs it is going to be a very unstable economy all over the world even the indian economy us economy uh, canadian economy it would be very unstable we would all be in a sense of an economic crisis i would suggest you save a lot of money the proof of funds you remember the money that you saved at the point of uh, submitting your application that money would come into picture now i would suggest you save much more money in the next few months maybe 6 7 months or maybe 8 10 months and then come to canada which with much more preparation with much more money in your hand yes having said that you should prepare yourself for the tough competition that you're going to face in the uh, in the jobs you'd be facing a tough competition because you don't have a canadian experience so the companies might exploit that factor and at the same time companies would be choosing all those people who are the best of the best okay so the gist of the matter is that all of those people who are actually thinking of coming to canada this year you should definitely postpone your plans to the time that you can actually afford to do so if you were planning to do the soft landing in the next couple of months you should definitely postpone it for the uh, summers if you were actually planning to come to canada in summer and maybe settle down here maybe you should postpone your plan to the next year you should give yourself more time you should save more money you should study more you should be more competent to uh, you know get that job to maybe grab that job that you are actually wishing to get i'm sorry guys for all the negativity that you might have seen in this uh, video but this is how it is this is the new re near reality and this is the new normal as they say i was suggesting all of this to you as if you are my friend if my friend my dear friend my cousin anyone who asks me this question i would suggest them the very same thing that i am actually suggesting you but yes things are changing rapidly every day every week if things get better i would definitely inform you i would definitely suggest you to come down to uh, to this wonderful land of canada the land of opportunities and yes start your bright future so thank you guys for watching this video i just hope that you liked the video if you did please click the like button If you agree with what I have to say please click that like button and if you have any suggestions please put them down in the comment section below I would love to read them and also if you haven't subscribed my channel yet please click the subscribe button before moving on to the next video thanks again